Hello everybody and welcome to this exclusive tutorial and in today's video I will be showing you guys at home how you can turn a boring bland wall like this into something like this and also change your clothes. Stick around because I'll be showing you step by step how you can do so. Let's go! This job here is actually for a client. I always pre-sketch it just because they have a clear idea. You could always freehand it, but I'm just letting you guys know beforehand, this has been pre-planned, hence the character, which is in the foreground, I drew separately from the background, and that way I can easily place the two like this to get perfect position for the wall. And for the piece we're working on today, I'm gonna to be breaking it down using the doodle grid method. If it was my um, own work, like personal work and not for a client, um, I would just freehand it onto the wall straight away without worrying about sizing. But because I'm sizing this up on a wall for a client, so it has to match um, certain specifics, I want to make sure everything is done perfectly um, with no second guessing. And basically when you're doing a doodle grid, what I'm doing is I'm placing a load of random shapes onto a wall. You want to do this over the space you want to cover. So here I'm on top to bottom and left to right. I'm just filling it with these random shapes. Once all the loose shapes are on the wall and you're happy that the area is covered fully, you want to then grab your phone and take a picture straight on. And it's very key that you take it straight on and not at a certain angle because when it comes to lining it up, you want it to match perfectly and not be slanted in some sort of weird degree. Once you have that straight on picture of the wall and a straight on image of the artwork you plan to blow up onto the wall, you then want to import those into the app photo layers. And once they are imported, you can then overlap both images, turning the opacity down on the initial drawing you plan to paint. Use the app photo layers to align your picture with the background. You then want to start picking up a color like a black, copying the image and lining everything up that you've matched on the phone. So let me just show you guys exactly what I mean. Here in this part here, there's an eyebrow that goes across this line here. And then we you grab yourself your spray paint and then you wanna go over the same bit on the wall. So it starts here and it's put in place. With this stage in particular, you really just wanna take your time with it and relax into the process. Here when I'm using the black, not only am I putting the lines in, but I'm just putting in rough indications of where I want to put the darker tones or shade. So later on I just have to overlay the lighter colours and it will merge automatic automatically without me having to bring the black back out to put the darker shades in place. Another quick tip, I'm actually going to use the purple as well as the black, that way I can use this as almost like an eraser. So any lines I see like here I want to shake in. I can then use this to shape it in and get rid of the lines. Just so when it comes to painting the actual character, it's a lot more clear for me to read and then I know exactly where I'm going to put the tones in, making my job super easy later on down the line. And if you've done things correctly guys, you should have gotten something that looks just like this here. Just give you guys an insight into the colours. Um, all the purple tones we all use for the background, which will be the gas station which you saw earlier. For the skull itself, I'm using all these skin colour tones from lightest to the darkest tone here, which is the same as when I do the way my drawings. As you see, I start off with just the simple colours <coughs> going lightest and darkest. This is going to be for the glasses inside the glass, white obviously for highlights, and black for your real dark areas if need be. But yeah, guys, these are the colours I'll be using today. Always make sure the colours are really well shaped to begin with. That way it saves the pigment from blocking up your caps or even worse, blocking up a can. And there's nothing worse than that when you're halfway through a project and you start losing colours to blocked valves. The first area of this character that I'll be focused on today is going to be the eyes. I learned from a portrait class that as humans we connect most with the eyes. So that is always something I treat more at the focal point. Because that's something as you look at a portrait or a character, you're drawn to instantly. So I always like just to double down and make sure I get these pretty much perfect and to a happy place. Now with these, because the eyes are actually behind a layer of glass, to add a real cool effect, I'm using a different colour than I am going to be using for the rest of the skull. And for the glass, I'm going to give it the tint colour of green. The first thing I'm going to do here when working in the glasses is add all the darker areas in first. Remember, that's a key point. 
and putting all the dark layers in first. So out of the range of greens, which I have four different colours, light to dark, I'm picking the darkest one and roughly putting in the blocks of dark shades before I even dare put in the mid tones and light tones. This way it gives me the colour to blend into. So let's say I've got a block of the darker green. Using the mid green, I can, sh I can turn it at a 45 degree angle and blend into it very softly and very slightly. And if needs be later on the line, I can use the darker tone again to overlayer. And then you have almost two different types of green because you've got pure dark, which is the straight dark, and then the blended dark tone, which acts more like a middle tone, giving you a lot more texture and gives you a lot more detail when you haven't really done much to achieve it. Now that all the darker tones are in place and I get to a place where I'm happy with it, I'm now moving on to the second darkest tone. And the idea is I'm going to slowly build my way up to the lighter tones in this image. So yeah, the two tones are the two darker ones I'll be working with. And the darkest are in place. So now with the second from darkest, I'm just looking to cover much of the area so it has a congruent um, colour scheme throughout the area I'm working on and like I said I'm actually using the colour green to go in contrast with the brownie colours I'm actually going to do for the skull but yeah so for that to two darker tones just keep layering up and set yourself so when you put the finer details and the highlights in you're in a good position where the highlights can blend into the second from darkest tone. And once you've unlocked the two darker tones, basically that's like, like a setup. So now you can move on to the third tone, which moves into the lighter realm of the color scheme. Now, normally, let's say with the two darker tones, there's bigger blocks or shading. So it's more free flowing. It's got more um, more of a flare to it. You just keep more, more blocky shapes. But when it comes to the lighter colors now, I'm actually aiming to do smaller lines little bits of details just highlights to set things off so this is why i always think of it like a, a layering process where you have to have a strong foundation and layer on top and as you will experience with spray paint yourself or if you have you would know you want to start almost being big and broad with your strokes at the very beginning be very loose and as you're getting in towards the more tone into the lighter areas here i'm trying to zero in so my lines are getting more small and compact almost as I'm just using as an edging tool just to edge out small lines or give greater indications of highlights which you can see through the eye socket on the rims of the eye socket I'm just highlighting very slightly with smaller lines just to just to shoot a lot off but the base color the foundations that we put in the very beginning the two darker tones they accentuate where that line is going so yeah it really is a bit of process of layering cutting back and taking your time building up from darkest to lightest those are the key points you want to be doing and now I've done the glasses and I just told you the principles from working dark to light I'm going to take the exact same formula and apply it to the rest of this character we'll be working on today so here on the skull I've got the darkest brown and I'm just using it to line some bits in so where I want the lines to be actually in the face and pin it to the side also to give it shade so later on when I got the lighter tones I can shade into the dark tones that are already present and layered on top and the good thing that's layering this way there may be some areas that you want to highlight and some you don't which gives it way more of a three-dimensional shape because obviously if the lights hit an object it will have a highlight on it compared to if it starts to get round the back which you can see by the teeth it goes back in the shade but it still has the same jagged shape which exists throughout the mouth area and the exact same process then gets repeated for the top of the head the darker tones are going in pull towards the glasses and once the mid tones in i'm using the dark of a highlight to spray against that that way i'm only using four different colors but it's giving me a complete contrast from the darkest tone to the light and the more of the contrast you've got the more dynamic your imagery will look as the lighter tone six sits against the darkest tone another quick tip is don't be afraid to be loose with spray paint um, once you start to realize how beneficial being loose with a can is to your actual artwork you start realizing how much of a how much of a good tool it is to create a multitude of effects but you sometimes find as a beginner you want to be tight and keep it clean as you do with a drawing but with spray paint you can almost use like a brush pull it left and right um, and yeah create a lot of different shapes but that will just come with time and practice in your can control which will get better over the time now I'm just filling up some of the background areas just to make sure the foreground the foreground image has something I'm balancing it against this way it gives me a great look at the different tones as I keep working through the character so yeah always have that in mind when you're working on the background colors too because you want your 
character to sit, sit well against it and um, from there say if you made a wrong colour choice you can adjust it like so. Now here for the clothing that I'm working on, I'm using the same process as I've done the glasses and the skull, which once again, I'm putting all the darker tones in first, then I'm moving into the second and darkest to blend into it, and then once again the same process, once you understand this you just apply it all over using the highlight can just to highlight the certain areas, and sometimes the smaller the highlight the better the impact, you don't have to go massive with the highlight. Um, once the two foundational dark tones are in place, slowly build up on the highlights until you get to a place you're actually happy with it. And you can decide from there whether you want to add more or take away. And the hands, you guys have guessed it, the same again. Here I've used a dark tone, really jagged and loose because it's a skeleton's hand, so I don't have to worry about super clean and clinical. And once that's in place, it's the second from darkest, once again, looking to just pit the base tones down which just opens up the door so now I can grab the lighter tones and add small little lines, small little flares to pull off the highlights and let the hand speak for itself. Now let's talk about doing the clothing and here I'm going to start off with the cap so underneath the bridge I'm just pitting in the first red which is the same is the darkest tone and now using the mid tone I'm sort of angling the can at a 45 degree angle and bending it so it's got more of a shade within the skull towards the skull because obviously it's under it's going to be into a darker area and just use that lighter can to pick up the highlight. Once I've done the overspray, I'm then gonna use very slight and small lines to highlight where the light is hitting the underneath of the hat. And likewise with the top of the hat, I'm doing the exact same. I'm coloring in the blocked area with the darker red and then just using the lighter red now at an angle to blend into it. So um, yeah, it's just a process of layering. And now I'm going to do the exact same with the blues. I'm just filling in the area so it has a congruent colour. And here I've chosen the colour blue. And I'm putting the dark tone against the lightest tone. And once that's in place, use the very light tone to pick up certain highlights and blend from the darkest so it's dark to light and blend into the mid-tone. It feels like there's a lot of repetition here in what I'm telling you, but that solely is what it is, is repeat pattern working on the darkers and building up slowly in towards the lighter tones. I do the same um, process when I'm drawing or tattooing and it is a safe bet to manage where the lines are going um, to create your final image. And that's why it's so important to make sure I think in the foundation, like the sketchwork is in place and then just repeat the pattern on each area until your design is complete. And let's say you want to do clothing that has a patting on it. What we're going to do is initially put the darkest and light tones, exactly the same process we've done with the hat. But now once we put that in place, we're using, here I'm using a dark brown. So I'm just lining in some fabric lines to give it a pattern, going with the flow of the arm. And once that's done, I'm then going to grab the dark red again and the light red and slowly mist over the black. So that way it looks more three dimensional and it, the lines are actually going with the fold. But to begin with, the lines themselves will be flat and with the spray over, we'll make it look like there's darker hints of lines and lighter hints of lines. What we really want to do here is bring this hand out forward and the way we're going to achieve that is by grabbing the green, we use the glasses, the lightest green, and actually get a line around here and that will bring the hand forward. So let me just change this cap quickly and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, using a real thin cap here, I'm using the Cobra stock cap. I'm just going to put a really thin line around and just watch how this pops. Just keep edging the line in. And that's just to accentuate the fact that this is in the foreground um, and separate from the rest. And right, 
Skulls, now in place. Um, a bit of advice, always do the background first because now you've got the problem of overspray onto the character, but I just have always worked this way where I like to do the, the fun bit first and then do the background second, but make it a habit to begin with that you don't do this. Always do the background first and then the character just to avoid all the touching up, which you will have to do now. But once you're good at it, you can do what the hell you want. So who the hell am I? And now we're moving on to the background. Uh, as you saw at the very beginning, this is a gas station we're going to put into place here. And it's already pre-sketched and drawn up from the doodle grid. I didn't have to worry too much on the doodle grid for the background because I don't want anything super focused or highly detailed because for this actual piece, the character is the focal point. And by having an overcomplicated background, you take away from the focal point. And with a lot of oil painting, sometimes that's why it's better to have a messy, loose background and a tight, center so your eye is drawn towards the tight and detailed area of the piece um so i'm looking to build up basic shapes here using different tones again the darkest i have five different purples and almost into the pink range i'm working um with not with the darkest of lights like on the others i'm just working in general blocks of colors and breaking down the background into different shapes so it's actually built up of different squares so when I see a square I fill it in pink if I see a long purple line I just fill it in purple to begin with so I've got all the basics in place before I start adding highlights and different tones to highlight certain areas um, and I'm just filling up each block and section and then refining smaller details as each block is in place now here I'm just using the mid purple to fill in most of the background because later on I'll be using lighter tones to blend up giving it a, a look of um, like an evening sunset but I'm not actually using sunset colours obviously I'm using different tones um, of purple so if you are beginning and you want an easy background choice use tones and not individual colours because if this is always doing different colours I'll be having a lot more of a complexity of mixing things up um, and making sure there's a balance in the colours and that's it ladies and gentlemen, free day of painting non-stop and I can't wait to show you the final result and what we have managed to create. Um, I'm actually super happy once again how this turned out. Um, there's going to be so much more in the future I can add to this place but for now I ain't going to say anything else and I'm just going to show you guys the final result. Let's go! <laughs> guys have enjoyed coming along on this journey with me and Rero's Hub. It's been such an experience and so much fun to create this for you guys. Um, everything I create, I was really want to make sure we're all a part of the same community and take you along for the ride. Um, as always, subscribe, like, all that other YouTube stuff. And until next time, keep creating, stay well, and peace. <laughs>